and we are back with another week of football and welcome to the Gaz and Times kickoff show. I'm Teddy Couch and this is Kevin Taylor and we got a full slate of football this week. Yeah we do Teddy and I don't know how this week can top last week's action but uh, I guess we'll give it the old college try huh? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, a full slate of games, even starting out tomorrow night on Thursday night. Uh, Hoax Bluff is at Southside. Uh, this will be um, Hoax Bluff's season opener and uh, a good one to kick off the season. Um, then we go into Friday. Um, we've got Coosa Christian is hosting Appalachian. West End is at Pleasant Valley. Westbrook hosts Ragland. Uh, Sardis and Sylvania kick off the season, uh, and Sardis will be on the road at Sylvania. Uh, Gaston plays at, over at San Rock. Glencoe goes to Ranburn. Uh, Gazin City hosts Oxford, and this will be the second week in a row that Gazin City has played the number two team in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of number two team in the state, number two, Etowah, will host Moody, and this will be the first time that these two teams have ever played each other. Uh, Albertville will uh, host Columbia. Uh, Alexandria will host Jacksonville. Boaz goes to Gunnersville, which I think will be a key ball game in Marshall County, a good one to go see. Mm -hmm. uh, Cedar Bluff uh, versus Spring Garden. Cherokee County versus St. Clair County. That's another good one that uh, outside of our area to really look forward to. Uh, Fife, uh, another number two team in the state. Uh, will host Geraldine, and uh, Piedmont goes to Addison. And then there's just a, just a slew of other games yeah. uh, across the area uh, and really some great matchups across the state. Um, so this should be a, an interesting time, uh, specifically an interesting time because a lot of these teams are playing non-region schedule, mm -hmm and we're about to jump into region schedule next week. So this kind of gives coaches a little bit more time to tinker with the with lineups and, and things like that to see where certain pieces of the puzzle can go. And then we got uh, Coosa's hosting Appalachian. Uh, do you see them getting back in the win column this week? Uh, that's going to be a tough one, Teddy. I, I think it, it'll be a tight ball game. I give a slight edge to Coosa. Yeah, I believe they get back in the win column here and get their first win of the season. And then you got West Ends traveling over to Pleasant Valley. I'm going to have to go with the home team. I'm going to have to go with, with Pleasant Valley because um, the, the issues that West End has with their offensive and defensive line has really got, got me wondering, you know, just how much can they improve after one week? It really seems like Pleasant Valley has really improved a lot over the years. I'm going to go with Pleasant Valley as well. Then you got Westbrook hosting Raglan. Uh, I like Westbrook. Yeah, I do too. I mean, they're just so deep and you know, great first win for them last week. So I'm going with the Warriors as well. Glencoe, first year head coach Brian Allred, they travel over to Ramburn. I'm going to have to go with the home team on this one too. Uh, you know, Glencoe, there are a lot of question marks out there. Ramburn, I, you know, it's, it's really this is a toss up game. But, you know, when it comes to those toss-up games, I have to give it to the home team. Yeah, I'm really curious to see Glencoe here. You know, like you said, a lot of question marks. I'm curious to see how they come out of the gates in this season, but I'm going to have to go with Ramburn as well. And then Gaston at Sandrock. I'm going to have to go out on – I'm going to go out on a line. I really think Gaston will beat Sandrock. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, – I think in, in my predictions uh, online, I think I went with Sandrock, but – there's just something that tells me that, that Gaston can pull this one out, and so I, I really like the Bulldogs. I see what Kevin's doing. He's, he's picking both, so that way he's right either way. Pretty smart. I'm going to go with Sandrock. I mean, Gaston's, you know, Lane Talbot in the backfield, the return Cameron Hawkins in the backfield. That's one I really have my eye on, and I do think Gaston can get it, but I'm going to have to go with Sandrock. And now, Sardis Sylvania. Sardis, Sylvania, they start off, uh, both of them, season opener for them. Uh, you know, Sylvania leads the series just by a hair, 14-12-0. and 0. Uh, Last year, Sylvania reached the quarterfinals. Uh, and then, of course, Sardis, they won the region, and uh, they, got, they got upset in the first round by Cherokee County. So, uh, you know, two real good football teams. 
Um, you know, Sardis, a lot of question marks. Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to be the starting quarterback for, for Sardis? Uh, you're looking at Jay Owens or Trent Presley, uh, and, and that's, from what I understand, it's going to be a game-time decision. Mm -hmm. We might see both of them Friday night. I don't know. Uh, you know, Sylvania, <sighs> consistency. That, that's what I, I see in Sylvania, consistency, you know, making the playoffs, uh, having a winning season or even on just a cusp of a winning season year in, year out. So, um, you know, I like this football game as far as two good football teams uh, opening up the season, but I still I have to give the home team here the slight edge. I, I like the Rams in this one only because they're playing at home. Uh, otherwise, I, I think I probably would say I'd go with Sardis, but because Sylvania's on the road, because they went so deep into the playoffs last year, because there's so many questions as far as quarterback goes for, for Sardis, I'm going to have to give that edge to the Rams. I'm going with Sardis. Um, I wrote down 21-17 for my score. Uh, Trent Presley, I got to see him in the spring game. Playmaker, I mean, he, he can make plays with his uh, feet and, and with his arm. Uh, and then Jay Owens, I didn't get to see him. He was, you know, injured throughout much of the spring. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's, he's more of a pocket guy. I would, be sh I would be shocked if you didn't see both. That's kind of what I'm anticipating seeing. So, but I'm going to uh, give the edge to the Lions here. Nice, nice. Then uh, another key game, Gazin City versus Oxford. Like I said, this is the second week in a row that Gazin City has played the number two team in the state. Um, you know, last week uh, they played the 5A's number two team, Etowah, uh, and uh, lost a heartbreaker, 32-23. Yeah. Uh, wow. What, you know, this is where we're going to see what kind of team Gazin City has. Yeah. Because how do you bounce back from an emotional loss like this to basically a crosstown rival, if you will. Right. I mean, really. I mean, these the, these guys are just a stone's throw from each other. And then you take on an Oxford team, ranked number two in 6A, uh, coming off a big win over Mumford. They beat Mumford 28 nothing. Uh, some <laughs> interesting stat that I saw, they held Mumford to only 50 yards of total offense. And they also held Mumford to minus 34 yards rushing on 33 carries. We all know a good bit of uh, Gazin City's bread and butter is, is on the ground. Uh -huh. So uh, this should be an interesting matchup. You know, another interesting stat from about Oxford, they're coming into this game with a 21-game winning streak in the regular season. Wow. You know, the last two years they went undefeated in the regular season. So it's going to be a task for Gazin City. And, you know, especially coming up with them they got Spartan heading up to that's next right speaking region play region. this is a big game right here yeah yeah uh you know that they always talk about trap games yeah. this could be a trap game for Gazin City you know you're looking ahead to Sparkman. you want to be able to get on the right track as far as the region goes you want to get a, get that region win but then you've got a really high quality opponent like Oxford and so, you know, and there again, like I said, coming off that emotional loss to Etowah, how does Bart Sessions and his coaching staff get these guys come together, get them mentally focused and ready to play a really good Oxford team? You know, uh, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to go with Oxford in this one, even though they're coming here to Gadsden. Uh, it's going to be a tough one, and I just, I just don't know whether whether the guys can bounce back this quickly after such an emotional loss. Because, you know, hey, we both were there. Mm -hmm. They left it all out on out on the line. They left it all out on that football field last Thursday, and so uh, you know, I, I just I like Gaz I like Gaz or I like Oxford. And with Gaz and City, I mean. There's a lot to build off of for them, though. You know, if they take away some of those turnovers, they had a lot of pre-step penalties in that game and turnovers as well. If they can clean that up, that offense could be okay. I don't think we got to see their full potential. I mean, they were playing behind the sticks the entire game. Right. And then defensively, you got to think, they didn't give up any points out of all in the second half. 
Right, you know, right. Both those came off turnovers offensively. So I'm with you, though. I have to go Oxford. I wrote down 28-21 for this one. But I think Gadsden City plays a good ball game in this one heading into Spartan. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I could see a, a close ball game. Uh, you know, there again, pen, you know, penalties, turnovers, those those will be – that will be the key mm -hmm. for Gadsden City. Absolutely. And really both teams. Uh, then let's turn a page. Um you know, Etowah coming off an emotional win yeah. and uh, even got a little bit of love among the sports writers, got a few first place votes, uh, but still uh, ranked number two in, in 5A. They host Moody, first time that these two teams have even played each other. So they don't know anything about each other, really, outside of uh, what they've read or, or whatnot. So, uh, you know, uh, last year Moody was four and six. Missed the playoffs, obviously, uh, and uh, you know Etowah. Uh, looking looking at their stats from from last week, 232 yards total offense, 168 of that on the ground, 64 passing. Uh, you know, one question I have is is you know who will we see at quarterback uh, Friday night? Uh, you know, uh, Derricky went down with an injury don't know how bad it is mm -hmm. you know does he start does he play even you know uh, troop came in and, and seemed to do a, a really good job for for Etowah. and so um, you know there's some question marks there even with the question marks though I still give uh, give the nod to Etowah to win Friday night same here I got Etowah winning by around 17 I think I wrote down 2017 here so, but the thing for me that's kind of interesting, this reminds me a lot of last year. You know, Etowah opened the season with a win against Southside. Then they traveled to Madison County and lose that game. Ooh. I only lost the regular season. This kind of feels like this could kind of be the same setup. You know, they had six turnovers in that game against Madison County. Etowah's got to be careful on that, but I think Etowah comes out with a win here as well. Yeah, I, I think if anything, this is a veteran, enough, veteran team enough okay. that learned their lesson from last year. Yeah that uh, they probably won't see that this mm -hmm. coming up. The big one tomorrow night, Hoax Bluff at Southside. Uh, Hoax Bluff leads the series with uh, 37 wins. They've lost uh, 28 and they've tied three times. Uh, you know, Hoax Bluff opening the season. Southside, they're coming off a, a tough loss to, uh, to Lincoln. Uh, the the matchup that I see here, the key will be how does Southside handle the rushing offense of Hoax Bluff? You know, last week Southside ended up giving up 218 yards rushing to Lincoln, mm -hmm. uh, and then they're playing against a guy who rushed for 2,000 yards last year. Okay, <laughs> that's a tall task right there all in itself. So, um, you know, uh, it, this, there'll be a lot of question marks here. Certainly battle with the running backs. You know, you got yep. Darren Meads on Hoax Bluff's side. And Cat Bothwell, you know, I was told that he will be playing this week. So it's going to be tough, uh, tough for both defenses, really. And it's going to be a lot of running the ball Thursday night at Barney Hood, no doubt about it. So you better, better get there early and uh, stick around because this game may be over in a couple hours, especially if they decide to run the ball because that means that clock's going to be tick, 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 tick going. I'll tell you a fun thing about this game, you know, you know Ron Doherty's from Hoax Bluff, played there, you know, and Coach Mike Robinson over at Hoax Bluff was his offensive coordinator in the mid-'80s. Ron was his quarterback over in Hoax Bluff. So that's a fun game for those two, you know, get to see each other you know, top midfield, and I asked Ron Doherty this week, I was like, is this a game that you still kind of get excited for? Because he's been at Southside a little while now, plays Hoax Bluff every year. He said, absolutely. You know, it's kind of surreal, still surreal for him to go through that game and get to play against his old coach, and it's one that he enjoys. He said he hopes to make Coach Rob proud, but he hopes he makes them proud by beating them. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun, you yeah. know, with those yeah. two teams play each other for sure. Well, it's, it should be a great game, and especially with it being the only game in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage anybody, if you got some free time, uh, I think you should be down in Southside Thursday night to see this game because uh, it's going to be a good one. Uh, two really fine football teams uh, and, and an, another great intra-county matchup. Uh, and so 
Um, as far as who I like in this one, I, you know, unless somebody can tell me how you can stop Darien Meads, I'm going to ride that Darien Meads train mm -hmm. for as long as I can, which means I'm going to go with Hoax Bluff. Same here. I got Hoax Bluff winning this one on the road to open the season out with a win. Um, I think Southside's going to play well in this game, though. I think it, they could keep it close. I mean, I just, how do you stop number six? I mean, nobody's been able to do it yet. Exactly, exactly. Well, uh, folks, we're, we're about to wrap this thing up, but uh, we want to remind you that we will come to you on Facebook Live Thursday night after the football game. So check us out. We should be hopefully be online uh, and live around 11 o'clock or so. We're going to do our best, but... We've also got a newspaper to put out, and we've got to get those stories out to you. So just be kind of on the lookout. Uh, if you miss us, though, you can always check us out on our YouTube channel, and you can check us out on Facebook, our Twitter feeds as well. So, uh, you know, be sure to come, come see us, and uh, I greatly appreciate everybody's time for, for, for spending their time watching us. Yeah, and thank you for joining us on the Guys and Times Kickoff Show. You can catch it on YouTube. You can catch it on Facebook roughly around 8 o'clock. You know, so just be looking out for that every Wednesday night, and thank you for joining us.